Hi, and welcome today to Eric's Tech Talks. Today we're doing a discussion about the things that make a 24 volt trolling motor look more efficient than a 12 volt trolling motor. It's good if you understand this so that you can make maybe a better decision on which to use for your boat and what some of the trade-offs are of one versus the other. Okay, to really understand uh, the key difference between a 24 volt motor and a 12 volt motor, you have to understand what the impact of lowering the current is and the effect that all the wiring has in terms of voltage drops and power loss. So I'll start with the example of a 12 volt, this 12 volt power drive, 55 pound. When it's going full throttle and you've got a brand new battery, you're getting somewhere in the range of about 650 to 670 watts that the entire system is trying to turn into mechanical energy. Now, a lot of people haven't really thought that much about how much voltage drop there is in the cables that are inside their trolling motor itself. So these wires and the wiring that's used in this connection from the head to the actual motor that's under the water are 10 gauge wires. So if you do the calculations on not only this, which is uh, the main connection into the motor, which is relatively beefy wire, uh, and then you add in the effect of 50 amps and what kind of voltage drop you're going to get on these 10 gauge wires that this is probably 7 or 8 feet and this is probably another 6 times 2 because you've got positive and negative going back to the battery. Now you're talking about a total voltage drop of about a volt uh, and through this entire part of your system. So as soon as you plug this in, now you've got to take into the consideration as to what your voltage drop is in the wiring that you've put in your boat. So in CODA's recommendation for a type of distance like we have with this boat, which is 20 feet, is 4 gauge wire. That adds another half volt. So now, going back to using some simple numbers, say we're talking about 600 watts that the system is trying to draw. That's your 12 volts times your 50 amps. So 600 watts is going into the system. Where is it going? So the cabling itself is going to drop one and a half volts. You're going to have 50 amps. So that works out to a power loss, and this is important. Keep thinking about power. Don't just think about volts or amps. You've got a power loss in a 600 watt system of 75 watts in your wiring. So from the standpoint of how much of your power actually gets to the place where the work is being done, you're losing about 12%, 12, 13% of the overall power that's coming out of your battery. And it's just disappearing in heat. So that's one of the reasons why you want to make your wiring big enough when you're wiring up everything in your boat, is if you try and go cheap on the wiring that goes from your battery to your trolling motor, uh, that 75 watts has got to get dissipated somehow. And if the wires are too small, it basically means that they turn into little heaters. And that can be an issue not only for safety, but eventually reliability and those kind of things. But let's go to our 24 volt example and see what happens there. So now, once again, we're going the same speed. So you can kind of expect the motor to be using the same amount, need the same amount of wattage or amount of power to turn it into mechanical energy and make your boat go a certain, distance, a certain speed. So now you've got 600 watts coming out on 24 volts. Instead of drawing 50 amps, it's drawing 25. So now two things happen. The voltage drop across all your wiring goes from 1.5 to 0.75. So right away, you're kind of getting something for nothing there. And the other thing that happens is because the current is half, uh, basically the amount of power that's lost in your wiring, and this is, this is where it's really important to understand, is volts times amps again. So instead of losing one and a half volts at 50 amps, you're losing 0.75 volts at 25 amps, which works out to about 15 watts rather than sort of the original 75, sort of 17, 20 watts. So this is kind of the net of it, is that the 24 volt motor putting out the same amount of power at the power head itself, at the bottom of the trolling motor, will only be losing a quarter of the energy through the wiring that you have in your boat and in the trolling motor of the 12 volt system. And that's a key difference because the difference is only about 3% 
of the power gets lost in the wiring on a 24 volt system going full throttle instead of like 12 or 13 on a 12 volt motor. That's a key difference and that's probably one of the more significant reasons why 24 volt motors look to be more efficient. So a lot of the discussion that's going on about trolling motor efficiency doesn't focus on the wrong end of the discussion and what that is is the batteries. So to just give you an understanding of how lead acid battery chemistry works, this is AGM batteries, sealed lead acid, uh, flooded lead acid, gel cells. Uh, about the only thing that doesn't apply to is the newer lithium batteries. And lithium batteries are linear in terms of how much power they'll deliver. But in any lead acid kind of battery, like the four types that I talked about there, the battery will actually deliver more power the less current you draw out of it. So if you have, let's take a Series 31 AGM battery, which is a pretty decent sized battery, it would have about 100 amp hour capacity. So what most people think is, okay, 100 amp hours reserve capacity, I can draw 100 amps out for an hour. Eh, more or less. Um, but what happens is, is, say you cut that in half. Now instead of having an hour's worth of power at 100%, you might get 2 hours and 20 minutes, or 2 hours and a half when you cut it in half. And when you cut that in half again, it gets even better. So now you go down to 25 amps, you might get five hours or five and a half hours. So right off the bat, if you have two batteries instead of one battery, whether it's a 12 volt system or a 24 volt system, the way that the batteries give out energy is going to get better. So that's the first thing that happens with the guys with the 24 volt motors, is they have two batteries in the back. Sure, the current goes in half because it's using 24 volts, but by just their nature, the batteries themselves will actually deliver more power over a longer time just because they're being discharged at a lower current rate. That's an important concept. Okay, so let's talk about another thing about motors. And the other thing about motors is that uh, motors, again, run on power. They don't run, they, they run on voltage and current and all that kind of stuff, but power is really the important so, say you've got this motor down here, and it's uh, being told to go as fast as it possibly can. It's, uh, as the voltage starts to drop, the current that it consumes, it, it tries to make up the energy lost or the energy that it needs by drawing more current. And this is something that the efficiency of the motor makes a big difference. So, if you have your 12-volt, 55-pound trolling motor running all day, at an 8 or 9 or 10 setting, uh, it's certainly not going to be as efficient as it would be if it was trying to produce the same speed for your boat if it was a 24 volt 70 pound thrust motor. So the fact that you're right up at the edge of the maximum amount of work that that motor can do does a couple things. Number one is it puts you in a bad place in the power curve because it's kind of running at the edge. It's the same thing with a gas engine. If you run it all day at red line, it's going to consume a lot more fuel just to try and keep itself at that speed versus running at 2800 RPM. Any electric motor is no different. As you get out to the edges of the curve, it's not as efficient as it is if it's operating somewhere in the middle. So, and when you're operating at the far end of the curve, just the fact that the voltage that's being dropped through your wiring harness and so forth is higher now it draws more current, that makes this problem even worse. So again, if you're running all day at a 12 volt, on a 12 volt trolling motor at 8, 9, 10, it's, uh, it's not as efficient as it's going to be. That means it's going to require more electricity in order to get that done. Okay, so the one last thing that I'd like to talk about is some of the benefits and maybe disadvantages of each voltage. So obviously if you have a weight concern on your boat because uh, you don't want to throw another 60 pound battery in the back uh, for whatever reason, then 12 volt is obviously a better way to go. Um, 12 volts in a trolling motor means that everything stays consistent in terms of your boat voltage. 
charge. So if you want to charge your battery off of a uh, isolator or something like that, so if you're out during the day and you start running low on battery voltage, you can maybe do a couple spins around the lake and bring the battery back up through your alternator on your main engine. That'll, that'll work. Uh, it also, the battery chargers, even when you're using shore power, is a little bit more simple than using one that needs to do two banks or three banks in the case of a 36 volt system. Um, when you start going into 24 volts, there are some rather interesting solutions out there. There's little devices that allow you to still charge off of 12 volt alternator with two, uh, two 12 volt batteries where they do an automatic switching thing and stuff like that. But again, it's, it's more money and, and it takes a little bit more work in order to get it going. Uh, the economics behind these, uh, particularly 50 and 55, at least where I am, there's lots of them that seem to be available for a deal. Like uh, either they can't sell them, you know, everybody looks at the trolling motor and says, well, for another 300 bucks, I'll go with a 70, and then I know that it pulls my boat. And there's lots of people out there that also say that, you know, you should get the biggest trolling motor you can. So if I look at this boat and I kind of go, okay, most of my fishing is going to be under two miles an hour, and it's going to be mostly freshwater lakes, maybe this is sufficient. And uh, the other thing that we're going to do in a future episode is we're going to take this 55 and we're going to upgrade it to a 70 just by replacing some components. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Uh, otherwise, um, that's kind of it. So let's wrap it up. So let's summarize and just make sure everybody remembers all the stuff we talked about here today. So there's three things that make a 24-volt trolling motor look uh, more efficient than a 12-volt trolling motor. First one is batteries. So at the other end of the connection, you've got two 12-volt batteries that on a 24-volt system, when they're wired in series, will be drawing, be, be having half the current drawn out of them to deliver the equivalent speed. What that does is if you look at the battery discharge curves that real battery manufacturers have, any lead acid battery technology, AGM, gel cell, sealed lead acid, flooded lead acid, they are all basically doing the same thing by when you start to decrease the amount of current that you pull out of them, they deliver more power over time. So if you take a uh, Series 31 AGM battery that's 100 amp hours and you draw 50 amps from it, it might last uh, two hours. If you take 25 amps out of it, you're going to not just double that to uh, four hours, you're actually going to see more like five. So that's again one of the reasons why the 24 volt system looks to be more efficient than the 12. But if you have a 12 volt motor, you can always put either two 6 volt golf cart batteries to power it, or you can put two 12 volt batteries in parallel, which is an absolutely follow this rule. Has to be the same brand of battery, has to seem to be the same model, has to be the same age. So don't go out and buy different batteries with different chemistries and try and hook them up in parallel. Really bad things can happen. We'll talk more about that in another video. Second reason why 24 volt is more efficient than 12 is the wiring. So in the overall system you've got 12 feet of wiring that's in the motor itself for a 54 inch uh, plus whatever's in this cable and uh, you've also got the wiring that you put into your boat yourself. Uh, a 24 volt system is four times more efficient at transferring the power from the battery to the motor that's in the water that does the actual work on the trolling motor. So that's just physics. You just can't change that. That's an inherent advantage of the 24 volt system. It's not that you just lose a couple fractions of a volt. You are four times more power, which is just getting turned into heat in your system. You're not getting any benefit out of it. Third thing that is uh, the advantage of the 24 volt system is 20 volt, 24 volt systems are generally more thrust. So therefore, if you're going all day at you know eight, nine, ten as the setting on your uh, trolling motor foot pedal, and uh, that's just kind of keeping you where you need to be, uh, you're going into the area of the operation of the motor where it's not as efficient as a 24 volt is going to be when it's basically halfway through its power curve. Same thing applies to a gas engine. If you run it all day pinned, you're going to use a lot more gas than if you run it all day at 2800 RPM. So that's no different in electrical stuff versus everything. It's not, it's getting out to the edge of what it's designed to do. And that's always less efficient than if you're right kind of in the middle. So those are kind of the three basic things. And 
hopefully that uh, helps a lot of people understand. Because like I say on the internet, uh, I am seeing a lot of controversy about this. And uh, because people don't have an electrical background, they may not understand it as thoroughly as, as people that, like me that have spent their whole life dealing with volts and amps and watts and things like that. So I hope that helps everybody. Um, just to uh, finalize uh, today, uh, respectful comments are always welcome. Uh, hopefully that helps somebody. Uh, I don't have any business relationship with any of the battery manufacturers, Army Coda, or any of those guys. So um, please help us out by following us on uh, Golden Channels. And uh, look forward to uh, seeing you on another lesson. Thanks.